Welcome to Wednesday and welcome to Shaped by the Word. I'm Paul Kemp. I'm here with Matt Kresge and Katie Kresge. And we are reading through the Gospel of Luke together. We're excited about uh, the adventure to read through Scripture together near this year. We're reading through uh, the New Testament beginning with the Gospel of Luke and then Acts and Paul's letters. And we'll come back and grab the other Gospels as well and read letters that are fitting the same theme. Uh, with each of those Gospels. It should be a fun year of learning and growing and seeing God work, you know, through the story of Jesus and through the story of the early church and also seeing him work in our lives as he shapes us, you know, by the word. So we come to an exciting passage today. It feels like Christmas. We are reading the story of the birth of Christ in Luke chapter 2. So if you have your Bibles, you might want to find that. But as always, we're not reading, you know, just to uh, entertain ourselves or uh, to become you know, a little bit more familiar with the background of the Bible. We're reading to know God, so we always offer ourselves to him, and we offer the moment to him as we read. So, Matt, do you mind yeah, doing that for us as we start? Father, we do um, ask you to, to meet with us as we read, um, to reveal yourself, um, to transform us, to shape us. We thank you that you are a God who has spoken uh, and a God who continues to use your word um, to transform your people. And so we pray as we read this that we would be like Mary who hears your words and, and ponders them and treasures them in their heart. Um, God, would you help us to to center ourselves on Jesus this morning? Um, and would we, um, would we glorify you? It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Uh, Luke chapter 2. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was the governor of Syria. And everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no guest room available for them. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You'll find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. Fantastic. Um, story. I, I feel like it should be a Christmas Eve service <laughs> or something when we read it. And it's good to take it out of the context yeah. of Christmas. Realize it probably didn't happen on December 25th. Probably happened a little bit you know, later in the spring. But it's a wonderful story of how you know, God became flesh. How he was everything that we are and yet everything that God is all in one. And it's such an amazing thing you know, that you yeah, angels say to the shepherds this will be a sign that the king of the universe has been born into this yeah. world you're going to find a baby lying in a manger wrapped in cloth yeah and it's so ordinary and so extraordinary all at the same time and it's a beautiful story yeah i love the way that luke records this as a historian you know when he gets to verse 15 he says when the angels had left him and gone into heaven the shepherds said to one another let's go to bethlehem and see this thing that has happened you know so a historical event they'll, they'll go and they'll find you know this baby lying in a manger but he adds that little clause at the end which the lord has told us about in other words god has told them how to interpret the events in which they're about to see you know so when they go to see this baby it's not just you know this kind of everyday birth it's no something special you know what you said everything man is everything god is wrapped up in this baby so when they see him it's god promising to bring about his promises you know he's fulfilling his promises 
but Luke just as the historians also recording, you know, this is this is how it happened. You know, shepherds yeah. show up. And of course, that takes us back to the introduction of the gospel when Luke said, uh, "Many have undertaken to write about the things that have been fulfilled yeah. among us." And what an exciting time to see all of God's promises finally being fulfilled, you know, in Christ Jesus. Yeah. And so you not only have you know the recent promises of the birth of Jesus, you know, the birth of John being fulfilled, but you have the ancient promises going all the way back you know to the garden of eden that the yeah. seed of man would crush the head of the serpent and uh, the promise of abraham that all the nations of the earth would be blessed for him and the promise to david that one day one of your sons will reign on the throne in mercy and peace forever and ever mm-hmm. and i'll be a father to him yeah. by the way and he'll be a son to me and then and you so all of these yeah and then themes. who are the first people that this news is announced to shepherds yeah. i mean not who you would expect if you were living at that time, I would think, you know, the biggest news of in the world, right? Yeah. Being shared with shepherds for the first time. Uh, but perfect in keeping with, you know, Absolutely. what Luke is going to reveal to us about the heart of the Father mm-hmm. for the outcasts, for the marginalized, for the, you know, I remember one of my professors used to say the Amherats, the people of the earth, <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, you know, those who... Uh, didn't live in palaces or understand privileges and of course we saw that in the the two hymns you know that we read yesterday yeah. the great reversal that he has sent you know the rich away hungry but he's filled the poor with good things mm-hmm. and so you see this common theme you know coming all the way through the book of of Luke where this is good news for the poor yeah, yeah. excellent and even just over the you know these two chapters we're just seeing that that good news brings about great joy you know, when they get the announcement of what God is doing in the first chapter, you just see this kind of rejoicing and you see this great theme of joy. And now when we get here and the shepherds, you know, the angel appears to the shepherds. He says, good news of great joy for all the people that the inbreaking of the kingdom of God through the Savior, you know, will bring about great joy. It's good news for us. And and it is. I, I think it's good for us to remove it away from Christmas and to see this isn't just a Christmas story. I mean, this is a this would have been a moment, you know, for, for these shepherds to to hear this news. And, and I just, I wonder what it's like to be a shepherd. I mean, it would have taken a lot, a lot to frighten them. You know, I mean, they would have seen everything. We know from just David, you mm-hmm. know, that David is having to kill off all these wild animals to protect the sheep. And, and so here you have these shepherds just out, taking a lot to scare them. And it's just, I love, you know, shepherds were out living in the fields, keeping watch. And an angel of the Lord appears to them. The glory sh- of the Lord shone around them and they were terrified. Yeah. And yet that terror quickly changes when the Lord, you know, the angel says, do not be afraid. I've got good news of great joy. And they go from being terrified, you know, to, to rejoicing. Worshiping. Yeah. And, and of course, that's uh, uh, picking up on an Old Testament theme as well, that uh, God's glory brings both terror and comfort. Yeah. You know, terror, because of who we are, we are a people who are estranged from a holy God. Mm. Uh, but comfort because he's the God who redeems us yeah. and brings us into his presence. And that's you know, part of the beautiful story. I'm told, you know, that that's the most often repeated command in all of Scripture. Do not be afraid. And the only reason we have not to be afraid is because, you know, God is God is for us. Mm-hmm. And, and, of course, in Matthew's gospel, that will be the name given this child, Emmanuel. God is with you yeah. in this moment and with you in, in a very, you know, very special way. And I love how Mary worships. She worships a little differently from the shepherds. Um, She kind of worships personally um, in her heart and ponders these things. Um, And you just kind of wonder what she was thinking, what she was praying. But as as a new mom, I have experienced that just um, this inner joy that is just kind of between me and the Lord when I have this child, you know, that I'm holding, that I've been waiting for. And then, of course, you have the shepherds who were like going around praising God um, and telling people about it. And I love those two different um, ways of worship. Yeah, and uh, yeah you have a you know, kind of a sense of introverted worship and extroverted yeah. worship. Yeah. Yeah. And the shepherds, you can kind of see them making waves as they come in the city and making yeah. waves as they leave the city. And can you imagine, Katie, you, you're talking about that private moment, you know, when your children are born. Can you imagine giving birth to your first child? 
and you're just you know kind of about to you know they're calmed down and you know the room's a little bit calm and all of a sudden Here you have a group shepherds. of shepherds crowding into the nursery yeah. you know smelling like sheep looking yeah. like they've been sleeping you know with their hair all matted together the whole you know kind of thing what a, what an incredible uh, and, and of course that was the message of angel this is good news for all the people yeah. mm-hmm. and uh, Mary was a good example of that as one of those that the world would have forgotten the shepherds were a good example of that as mm-hmm. a group of people that the world would have forgotten and it's such a uh, that you just love you know as we mentioned you know as we started you know the podcast both the extraordinary and the ordinary nature I mean this is beyond extraordinary in so many reaches but it's also beyond ordinary it's so common yeah. in so many reaches and that's the beauty of God invading our space in order to fulfill his promises yeah. you know I, I think thinking maybe on what Mary would have been treasuring and pondering I think her song gives us a little bit of insight to that because her song is so filled with Old Testament scriptures that she would have she wouldn't have I don't think Mary in that moment would have sat there and thought what is God actually doing? I'm not quite sure. I think she was probably rehearsing all those Old Testament passages and promises that she had heard as a kid, you know, and and she's still a kid, Mm -hmm. you know, but I I think she was just pondering and treasuring all of those things saying, wow, God has continued to fulfill his promises. Yeah. Yeah. And he's chosen me for some reason to be a part of that. And I think that would be such, I mean, you see it in her song, just so humbling to her that she gets to be a part of this huge thing. Yeah. Oh man, that's beautiful. Uh, now it's a you say she was just a kid, which she was, but she just grew up. Yeah, yeah. she just grew up. Yeah, and it was a big moment, you know, to come to from Nazareth to Bethlehem, not to have space. Uh, you know, which is kind of uh, almost a parable. You know that uh, when the king came, there was no space. Yeah, mm-hmm. there was no room. And, of course, you know, the bigger invitation is for us to make room you know, for him and to receive him as a king. As, you know, John the Baptist in his ministry will encourage us to knock down hills and paths and to receive, you know, to receive yeah. receive the king. Mm-hmm. So uh, I love the way that, uh, you know, Luke tells a story. I love the way that he we- leaves, you know, weaves these images together. And, of course, you know, from the very beginning, how many times did we hear the word City of David? Yeah. Mm-hmm. City of David. Yeah. City of David. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, you know, he's definitely a historian. I mean, Luke is telling us a history here, but he's also giving us insight to the theological history that's also wrapped up in it. I mean, even, you know, so Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to Bethlehem the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. I mean, just in case, you know, mm-hmm. I, I, I want to make sure, I mean, he, he states this right um, in the first chapter. Why is he writing this gospel? It's so that we may know with certainty the things that we have been taught. Right. I mean, that's why he's writing to Theophilus. And, and so I, I think this is just a good reminder to us that these things in which we've heard, they weren't just kind of made up fairy tales or speculation. I mean, this stuff is grounded in history. Um, and, and, it, and yet there's also that those theological promises and hopes wrapped up in all of this. So when you get to the end of it, yeah, in verse 20, it says the shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. Mm -hmm. In other words, I mean, you get, we mentioned it in the first chapter when, you know, may no word of God fail. And yet here we are beginning of chapter two and it's still holding true just as they had heard. That's what they saw. Mm. And that's what the whole story will be about. Mm -hmm. And just as God's people have heard for generations, it's now coming true in the person of Christ. And a beautiful, uh, beautiful description of that. And uh, even whenever the angels announce, you know, the birth, you know, to the shepherds, they don't say today in Bethlehem. Again, they say city of David. Mm -hmm. Uh, So Luke is very aware of how how big this is and and how small it is all at the same same time. Mm -hmm if not for the uh, display of the glory of God around the angels, this would have been uh, the most unnoticed moment in all of history. Yeah, Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And I can't imagine what that would be like for the, I mean, first there's an angel, one angel, right? And then all of a sudden a great company of a heavenly host appears and is singing, praising God. And I, I would love to be, 
able to be there and see that. And of course, someday I will get to see yep. something very similar, but probably way bigger. But oh man, I, w I just imagine the sky just being lit up with the glory of God and just all these angels. No, that singing. is a that beautiful expression. You know, they had been in the presence of God, and so uh, they reflected the glory of you know the yeah. reflected the glory of God. Shekinah but that glory. was only a reflection. Yeah. You're right. What is in store for us? Something that we possibly you know couldn't bear to see right now, but we will be transformed into His image from glory to glory, so that we may see His glory. Uh, so fun All because uh, of this baby. Because <laughs> of yeah, just because of this crazy moment mm -hmm. so many years ago in such a humble place with such humble people mm. heavenly father we thank you for uh, the gift you gave us in, in christ jesus what a remarkable gift and what a remarkable way to give him to us thank you that it is good news for all of the people the poorest of the poor those who cannot find a place to lay uh, their children to sleep those mm who living out filled with sheep. We thank you that you have invited all people into your presence to experience your glory through Jesus. It's in your holy name we pray. Amen.